So the top three most common objections that we get on sales calls and how I overcome them. So it really doesn't matter on your industry. There's gonna be some value in this for you. But the big thing you need to understand, especially if you're a newer sales rep, is most objections aren't real. They're fake, they're smoke screens. And it's our job as salespeople to peel back the layers of the onion. The way I like to think of this when it comes to the top three most common objections is sales is the 80-20 rule. Most reps can't handle a basic objection. So if you can just master these three fundamentals and understand the principles more so than the words that are used in overcoming them, it's gonna put you ahead of 90% of reps in the industry. So imagine this right now, right? You're on your sales call, everything's on the table. You've presented your price, you've presented your timeline, next steps, the whole nine, and then the prospect says that they wanna think about it. Now, most reps, doesn't really matter the industry even, they just ask, what do you wanna think about? And you know, while that's not a bad approach, I think it's vague and I think there's not a lot of intention behind it. So here's what I like to do. Instead of adding a bunch of sales resistance by just straight up asking them, you know, what, what do you wanna think about? I like to live to fight another day. I like to set up an insurance policy, I call it. So here's what I do. Let's say my prospect's name's Troy. I say, Troy, that's not a problem. So as far as thinking about it goes for you, just so I know I'm available, do you think it's gonna take like a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years? Or do you think a couple days is all right? And they say, yeah, a couple days is fine. So I say, cool. As far as timing goes for you, do you just wanna do the same time on Saturday, just 2 p.m.? Sweet, I'll send you over the link. Now, while I'm doing this, Troy, while I'm sending you over the link, um, when it comes to thinking about it for you, what do you think is gonna require the most thought? Is that gonna be on the price or the program itself? And then from there, I'm allowed to dig a little bit deeper. And the reason why I set up a call first is I'm lowering sales resistance. I'm agreeing with them, I'm disarming them. And that's extremely important, especially if you're trying to do a one-touch close, is to disarm the prospect, to get them to open up. And that's how I do it. Now, most of the time, like I was saying, objections are smoke screens. So usually from here, when you narrow it down to the program or the price, it usually comes back to the price. So what started as an I wanna think about it objection, is now a price objection. And here's where I usually go from here. So the prospect will usually say, yeah, no, the program's great. It's, it's just the price for us. So here's what I do, I isolate it. I say, Troy, let's just put price to the side for a second. As far as the program goes, you know, what do you feel good about there? And then they'll just kind of rant, they'll go on a monologue about why they like the program. They'll tell me how it will think it will help them, how it will benefit them, how it will solve X, Y, Z. And here's where I go from there. I try and go a little bit deeper if I can. So when they wrap up their speech, they tell me everything they like about it. I just ask what else? And they go a little bit deeper. Now, when I start speaking to them again, I'm actively listening to everything, right? And I'm using that to relay that back to them so that they can hear it a second time, right? So I'll just repeat it back to them. Be like, cool, so you think, you know, the program helps you out with ABC. It gets you a little bit closer to blank. And then it sounds like most importantly, it helps solve the ABC issue as well, right? Cool. And the prospect agrees. And sometimes they go even deeper. And now I get to the point where I try and pinpoint the objection with a hypothetical. And here's what I do here. Sweet. Uh, it sounds like, you know, as far as the program goes, Troy, that falls in line with what you're looking for, you know, especially in solving X, Y, Z. So when it comes to the pricing though, do you think if the pricing fell a little bit closer to your budget, at that point, it maybe make a little bit more sense to move forward. This close right here, it's worked wonders for me. Essentially what I'm doing is explaining the program. They justify it to me as to why it's great, why it fits their needs. But now I just have to overcome the pricing objection because if the client says yes, it's just the price and we can fix that. And here's how I like to do it. I call this the manager or the step out close. So I believe in the law of reciprocity. If I do something for someone else, they are more inclined to do something for me in the future. And here's the framework behind it. Cool, so let's just do this. I'm gonna shoot a text to my manager, see what we can do in terms of pricing, see if we can find something that helps you out with your situation a little bit more. And then from there, you know, if we can make it happen, great, we'll wrap up. If not, no harm, no foul. Does that sound fair? They usually say, yeah, yeah, cool. All right, sounds good. And usually you get them excited because now you're working with the prospect to, you know, they're in a unique situation, dude. It's, it's not like every prospect's the same. So when you can do something like this and customize or tweak it just the slightest bit to help them out, it makes them feel good. And then while, well, you know, all this is happening, I'll just build small talk, you know, keep talking about the program, whatever it is, dude, just maybe build a little bit more rapport. And then from there, I transition in the close. I say, yeah, everything looks good. Got the thumbs up from the manager and here's what we can do. So rather than you guys paying the $10,000 today, we're just gonna break it up. So we'll do $5,000 today. 
get you guys in the program, get you some quick wins, and then next month, you pay the rest of the five grand. So we'll get you guys started, and most importantly, we can save your spot in line now. Cool, they're ready to go, deal closed, it's done. So if I'm closing in person, I'll literally walk outside, take a phone call, and then when I come back in, either I will change up the payment option, I'll change up something, just tweak the offer a slightest bit to make them feel like they got a better deal. People feel good about it. it, helps with the closing process. Now, let's say you don't have a payment plan and you just have one offer pricing, which is fine. You get the objection, price is too high. And like I was saying earlier, the main thing that most reps do is they justify the price. I like to keep it super simple. No, I hear you. As far as what we provide, it puts us on the more expensive side of things. So when it comes down to what you're looking for, right? If we were just bottle those into three things, if we were bottle into speed, into quality and experience, and into price, which two do you think would be the most important to you? And this right here can take the price objection away completely. And here's the explanation behind it is when we go to McDonald's, we don't go there for a first date with a chick. And the reason being is while it's cheap and while it's quick, the experience is terrible. Now on the flip side, it's the same reason when we go to Universal, Disneyland, whatever it is, dude, we pay more for the fast pass, not only for the experience, but for the speed that comes with a higher price. And then from there, it usually falls into two categories where they say their price and speed, or maybe they say price and experience, whatever it is. So then from there, I like to close it on a hypothetical. So just so I can better understand, Troy, let's just say, you know, you did move forward hypothetically. What would be like the worst situation? Would you be like homeless? Would you be eating out of soup cans, snatching purses? How bad would it get? And in doing this, <laughs> the reason why I say this, I actually stole this from Brandon Carter. He's great at sales. He's got a good framework for as far as closing on this objection goes, is I get to understand it a little bit better. Like if money is a real issue for them, they're extremely tight on money, then maybe we have to look for a different option. Maybe we have to look for a credit card, something like that. But most of the time, I get them comfortable with the worst situation. They realize, you know, it's, it's not as bad as I'm thinking. I'm overthinking it. And that allows me to transition to a close a lot better. It's just getting them comfortable with the worst situation. I mean, how bad would it get? Would you be snatching purses, living on your mom's couch? It takes them into the future. And that's the most important thing is, you know, you're taking the prospect down the road of what it would look like if they did do it and are they comfortable with it? And it's gonna help them justify the decision. The most important part, especially when it comes to a close like this, when you're selling a high ticket offer, is conviction. If you truly believe in your heart of hearts that your product is the best thing since sliced bread and it can genuinely help a prospect solve their issue, dude, I've literally had clients ask their family members for money to buy our services because I'm convicted in it, I believe in it, I know it works. You can't do that if you're, if you're selling some dog shit offer. And when you close them, it shouldn't be about like, oh, I, I got them, I got them. No, it should be like, okay, cool, they're closed, now it's time to deliver. So next up, this kind of depends on the industry a little bit more, is depending on your offer, you might get the, I need to talk to my partner, whether it be my wife, my husband, my business partner, whatever it is. Now, when most people try and solve this objection, they start with this. They say, you know, what would your partner say if they were here right now? And it's kind of counterproductive, dude, because their partner's not here right now, and that's probably exactly the reason that they want to talk to him. So I do not believe in the hard close. I do not believe in, you know, the buy or die mentality. Because for me personally, that's how you get sued. That's how you get chargebacks. That's how you lose your commission. And most importantly, dude, you tarnish your reputation. It's just not good for business. Now, ideally, how we prevent the I want to talk to my partner objection comes from appointment setting. We preface it in the beginning. You know, who else is going to want to take a look at something like this? And I make sure that they're going to be involved in that process from the get-go. Now, if you can't do that, their preset appointments, whatever it is you're dealing with inbound, I handle it like this. Instead of asking the prospect what their partner would say about this, I need to make sure the prospect is sold first because sometimes that's not even the real objection. Sometimes they don't have to talk to their partner. It's just a deflection because they're not sold on the product or service. So here's how I handle it. I say, understood. So as far as it goes for you, how do you feel about the program? And they're gonna name off everything they like. They're gonna sell themselves. And the cool part is, is it's not even as important for me to hear this, but it's more important that they hear this. They're talking themselves into it. And then from there, it's pretty simple. You know, you can dig a little bit deeper, ask what else, but then I like to transition into this. Cool. So based on everything you told me, it really doesn't sound like XYZ would necessarily have a problem if we were to solve any of this for you guys, right? They say, yeah, or I, I gotta talk to blank, whatever it is. And then you pretty much have two options. You can go for a one-touch close or you can set up the two-touch. If you wanna go for the one-touch close, 
Here's what I do. Cool. So I got to jump on another call here pretty shortly. Um, while I'm here, do you just want to bring him in? We can phone him in real quick, run through all the important details together, or do you want to run through all that stuff yourself? Now, if you get the other partner on the line, here's the framework that I like to have. I don't talk a ton when the other person gets on the line. I actually let the partner sell the partner. And here's why I do that. It's gonna mean 10 times more coming from a friend, a husband, a wife, a business partner than it ever would mean coming from a sales guy. And the reason, that's why I ask, you know, I isolate the objection and I ask him, cool, you know, how do you feel about the program? And they're gonna list off all these things. So if I can't get the second decision maker on the call, I just prime them as my sales rep. They understand everything. If they have questions, I answer them. If they don't, they're good to go. And then they sell their partner on the products or service and you just set up the two touch. Now, the most important part when it comes to closing framework is A, don't just be high pressure. As far as high pressure goes, it, it's not a good approach. And people can see right through that. So I like to be a blend directly in the middle. I just ask them a couple questions, get to better understand the problems and help find the solution. So like I said, this is what works for me. I hope you found value in this. And over the course of the next couple of days, we're gonna be covering a lot more sales content. So as always, stay focused, stay committed. If you'd like to see more, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.